All right, what's going on, bus traders? This is Alex again. Today we're going to be covering a few different things, um, position sizing, risk management, and hedging. A lot of these things we've already touched on, actually. And so this is not really going to be a lot of new information and more just making sure we understand how our position sizing is determined and how our risk is determined. Okay. And then we'll talk shortly about hedging and about um, taking break evens when you have to. Okay. So let's get right into this. I mean, see my first note here, we should all already know this too. The safest move for an entry is to wait for the first pullback after a change in market structure to add heavy size. And you don't want to risk more than 20 to 30% of your total desired position size buying before the candle setup and the cycle cross. Okay, so we'll go, let's go look at the, the last bear market, get an idea of what I'm talking about here, right? So when did this switch into a bear market for Bitcoin? That's when we broke down below the bands and when price came and made a lower low. And truly that already happened like right here. Right. But visually, we see this happen over here. You break to lower lows. And now this now we've waited. Right. This is going to be the first pullback after a change in market structure. So this is going to be where we want to add heavy size. Right. Right. And this is going to be where you do it. Right. So let's hop into the daily and see what we got. All right, and this is really, I know it might not sound like this is risk management or something, but it absolutely is, All right? Imagine, you know, imagine you're, you're shorting a trend that hasn't truly switched bearish, or you're, you're longing a trend that's, in a bear market, right? If you're longing lower lows, it's, it's just not gonna work out so hot, right? So we wanna be trading with the trend. All right, where was, where was that? Oh yeah, right here. Okay, so yeah, you rip to a newer low, right? And you get your first pullbacks after changing market structure. So you got lower lows and lower highs. You're now in a full-blown bear market these are the rallies you want to be shorting. Right? Most often than not, we want to be adding our shorts above the 30. All right? That's where the best risk reward is going to be. You can see both of these fit that. Right? Both of these are with a cycle high. And both of these are pullbacks after a change in market structure. All right, we're below daily pi, which means our weekly bands are coming down. All right, everything's in a bear market, so now we want to be shorting more than longing. We're core short. And, right, we've been waiting patiently for the right opportunity for the first pullback after a change in market structure to add our heavy position sizing. And now what we're waiting for is the candle setup because what the candle setup gives is our tight risk. It gives us our position sizing. And if we risk too much buying before that setup, then we risk hitting our max loss per trade too early. All right. And so that's, that's actually what I'm going to hit on next. Cause this is, this is really, really important. And I've mentioned this max loss idea a lot. Right, you guys hear me talking about taking a 2% or no more than a 2% max loss per trade. And that's what we're gonna be talking about here. Right. Oh, hold on. All right. So, yeah. Just a little note, max losses, yeah, the most important thing we want as traders is to not lose money, right? Because trading opportunities are infinite, right? There will always be another trading opportunity. There will always be something that's undervalued out there. But your trading capital is not infinite, right? You definitely can run out of money. 
but we want to be making sure we can take tomorrow's trade if it comes. Okay, so we just don't want to lose so much that we can't trade anymore. And a good way to avoid this is by setting strict max losses per trade. I'm going to set these apart a little bit, make it easier to read. All right, so you've got your max loss per trade, your max loss per day, your max loss per week, and your max loss per month. And they're all, you know, kind of derived from the previous one, right? So throughout this entire video, we're going to go off the assumption that you're trading a 100K account. And I know most of you are not. It's just a good number to go on, right? And we'll go and say you're risking 2% of your total account as your max loss per trade. Meaning, right, what's 2% of 100K? That's $2,000. So that means at any point, if a stop gets hit on your trade, you cannot be losing more than $2,000 to fit your risk management plan. All right? So let's go with that assumption. Okay, wait, we're just gonna... We're just going to delete all this, all right? If you guys want to go back and pause where I had the, all that text out, it might be worth doing that. Here, I'll put it up. No, I, I would just go back and pause because it was nice and organized, all right? If you guys forget what uh, all this stuff said. All right, but let's look here, right? And see if we can fit everything to our risk management plan, all right? We've got a cycle high. We're back above the 30. Our market structure has already changed, so we're going to be trading in the direction of that. And then I get a topping tail setup, All right? So I can short on this close. All right, we have the nice big wick and the candle moves away from it afterwards. Our cycle is high, I'm in, All right? And your stop goes above your entry or if you prefer above the major pivot, it's up to you. All that will change is how much money you can put in the trade. Right, if your stop is up here, your stop is 15% away. If your stop is here, which is what we'll assume on for this calculation, your stop is 6% away. All right? So what does this mean? All right, I have a 100K account. This trade, if my stop gets hit, is going to be a 6% loss. So I have to make sure 6% of however much I put in here is less then $2,000, my max loss per trade. All right, so I'm going to pull up my calculator here, and we'll just start trying out some numbers. So let's see if we can risk $50,000. That's only half of our account. All right, $50,000 times 0 0.06. That's $3,000, so that's a bit too high. Let's try $35,000. And I'm, honestly, guys, there's probably a much better mathematical way to do this, but uh, I'm not a super heavy math guy, so this is just how I do it. I take numbers. This, like, you know, I just take a random number in here and then I multiply it times my stop loss to see if it's going to fit my risk management plan. So 50K was too much. We'll try 35K. 6% 6 of 35K is 2,100. So we're getting really close. Let's try 32,500 times 6% loss. Boom. All right, we found it. So 32,000. $500 is the max we can put in here, okay? Because 6% of $32,500 is $1,950, which is just under 2% of 100,000, okay? And the nice thing about using a 2% max loss per trade is if this hits, and I go down to, I'll go down to what, 90, about 98K. Now, if I decide to take another trade, I'm risking less because now my max loss per trade is not $2,000. 2% 2 of 98,000 is 1960. So that means I can risk, I can't risk quite as much as I could on this account because I lost some. And so what this means, if you guys aren't catching this, is the, the more I lose, the less I'm risking, which is kind of counterintuitive to how a lot of people trade where, oh, I took a big loss. Now I got to double down to get that back. You know, they try, they try and go heavier when it goes against them. 
and um, I say they, I mean, I've done this before too. It's just a, it's just a, it's okay, buddy. Sorry, my cat just freaking out. What's up, buddy? It's okay, buddy. I don't know why he's freaking out. Sorry about that. But yeah, instead of doubling down when you lose money, you should be risking less. And that's what this 2% max loss will do for you. And I say 2%. I mean, you can risk 3% max loss per trade, 4, 5, whatever you want. I wouldn't go above 5. That's getting pretty that's getting pretty risky. And if you guys will see over here from earlier, I had a max loss per trade, max loss per day, max loss per week, and a max loss per month. And essentially, if, if you're hitting any one of those other than max loss per trade, per trade you got to take a break. Right? If you're having one day where you take two 2% 2 max losses per trade, maybe you should take the next day off and reevaluate or just do some paper trading. Right. Likewise, if you have two max losses per day in a week, right? Remember that 2% is your max loss per trade. 4% is your max loss per day. So if you take two of these per day in a week, that's an 8% loss in one week. So it makes sense after this to take a week off because, you know, either you're doing something wrong or you're just having an unfortunate trading situation. Right. But it, Makes sense to take a break if you take more than two max losses per day per week. And then going even further forward, per month, you do not want more than two max losses per week per month. Because if you do that, you're at 16% of your account lost in an entire month. Which again, is not game ruining or anything. You can still be around, but that is definitely grounds to take a month off or at least a few weeks and reevaluate because that's a lot of losses per but all of this will, you know, the, the, the average trader who doesn't listen to this is wiped out long before this, right? So using this will ensure each time you take a loss, you're risking less, which is what we need to be doing, right? So we'll go back to this setup here, right? We're at about a 6% loss. And we determined we can risk $32,500, about 33% of our account. Right, so we'll short that right off the bat. All right, then our cycle it starts to move in our favor. Right, let's go look at a fib too. All right, we're coming into halfway. I would be taking a good 33% off. Right, so maybe we'll take off 11k here. And I'm actually gonna, I'll just put this on the charts to make it easier. So we shorted 32.5K here. All right, we added back or covered a third of that here. Oops, right here. Okay, so now we're at so we covered a third, so we're sitting at about minus 20,000 now. All right. And then price, price keeps moving in our favor, All right? We'll take another third right there. Okay. So now I've got about 33% of my position left. All right, the cycle crosses up with this move. I'm taking off the rest, All right? You guys see how I'm following that? And this whole time, I'm using a trailing stop. So normally when you get a, a move like this, I'm not taking everything off until the market takes me out. So maybe, maybe when the cycle crosses, I say be out 80% of your size. So right now I'm out about 60%. For 66%. So I'll take another little bit off. Maybe we'll say we'll take off 5K. Okay. And so now I've taken profits 20 to 27,000 out of my original 32,500. 
I've taken 83% in profits. All right, and the last piece is just gonna have a, a trailing stop above every candle setup. So we get a topping tail here, that's the initial stop. All right, you get a bearish engulfing here, moving the stop. Another bearish engulfing here, moving the stop. All right, another bearish engulfing here, move the stop, and then boom, you get ticked out right there. And that's where your last piece exits, all right? And that's not you deciding to exit there. That's the market taking out the lower highs from your candle setups. All right? And so now you're just flat waiting for another chance to short. You rock it through your original short, which is why we're glad we took all our profits with the cycle. All right? And then the next place to watch for resistance after this, I'm going to go ahead and delete all this now. All right, guys. The next place to watch after this is this resistance and up at this resistance All right so you get a nice huge candle what was the range of this the range of this one daily candle was 20 percent so you get a big rejection coming into a resistance level a cycle high and then a topping tail setup where you get a nice big wick and follow through the next day all right, so at this point, that's another short setup. And your stop here is a lot further away. Got a 20% stop, so that means we can't quite risk what we did last time with this trade, right? We had tighter risk. So now, we've got to figure out, you know, I'm, we're gonna say you have a 100K account, and in reality, you'd have a bit more because of your profits, but you know, we'll just go with the example for now. 100K account. Okay, and you can risk 2% per trade. And here you've got a 20% stop loss. So we've got to figure out 20% of what is going to equal $2,000. And luckily this one should be pretty easy, right? It's 10,000 because $10,000 times 2% is, wait a second, not times 2%, that's my bad, times 20%. 10,000 times 20% is 2,000, right? Yeah. So we can risk up to 10%, or sorry, $10,000. Okay, so we can't risk as much as we risked last time, but we're fitting our plan, and that's what matters. All right, and then price moves in your favor. All right, your cycle is getting low again. It makes sense to book some profits, right? So you shorted 10K. So maybe you take off 3,500 here or a third, right? Then we get our cycle cross up. We'll take the rest off when our stop gets hit. Right, and I haven't been doing this as I go, but the same concept from back here goes with trailing, right? Your original stop is here. You get another topping tail set up here. So I'll lower my stop to here, right? We get this huge bearish engulfing right there. I'll lower my stop to here. And boom, right there is where everything else gets taken off. Right, ideally we get, you know, when the cycle was here, back here, right, we still got another push lower to trail out, right? So we might be hoping for that here, but we still keep the trailing stop from the swing highs of the candles in case we're wrong. And then when we're wrong, you get stopped out. And that's fine. You ended up being stopped out. What is this? I think your entry was in here. You ended up being stopped out still 2.5% in profit. Instead of just leaving your original stop up here to come and potentially get ticked at a 24% loss now, right? And then we just wait for the next cycle high to add more shorts. And this whole time, keep in mind, we waited to do this after a change in market structure. And so now price has come in and gotten rejected at an area that was previously attempted to support. 
okay? Another thing we're gonna talk about here in a bit is taking a break even, but more often than not, I use this form of a trailing stop kind of as my taking a break even. Now it doesn't, that will always work. Often you will, you know, take a trade and it'll immediately go against you. But if I, you know, if I take a, a long setup here and then the day after it moves just slightly against me and I'm like, oh, or let's, let's say you took a long setup here. And then two days later it moves against me and I get nervous and I set a break even sell and I get wicked out right before the entire move. That, that wasn't, um, you know, what's the point of the stop loss It's to protect your capital. But a lot of people are using break even stops to protect their ego because they don't want to take a loss. And what that really means is they never accepted their risk in the first place, which in turn might mean that they took a bad trade. But again, they're trying to protect their ego, so they move their stop to break even, and then they get stopped out before the action happens. And it's great they didn't lose any money, but often you find someone just taking a lot of break evens, and that's not, that's not good either. Okay. So more, more often than not, I will just use a trailing stop where I'll take my, I'll have my initial risk and then, oh great, if I get an engulfing later on, I'll move my stop. Oh, I get another engulfing or a topping tail take out and move my stop. And that way I'm moving my stops with the candles to where I will be break even, but I'm going to let the market decide when I get taken out instead of just my entry because the market doesn't know when you entered. It doesn't know where your break even is. It doesn't, it doesn't know any of that, right? The market doesn't care where your stop is. It's just going to do what it wants to do. Random markets, right? So if you're deciding to take a break even, then you're kind of just fart, you're farting. You're fighting the market a little bit, right? And we don't, we don't want to be fighting the market. Okay. And I'm not hating on people that take break evens, but you want to take a break even as strategically as possible, which is why I choose either, you know, a pivot high, pivot low, or using individual candles, right? And we'll take another example here. This eventually rips to a new low. So, you know, same thing goes. We exited in here and we got stopped in here. So then you just wait for the next cycle cross right there. You get a bearish engulfing setup. And in this case, you're doing the same thing as I talked about earlier. Either you're using a tight stop above your setup, right? We've got a cycle cross and a bearish engulfing. So either you're using a tight stop above there or you're using a stop above the pivot lower high which is much further, which means you'll be using much smaller size. Okay, so that's all that would change. We'll go based off the assumption you're taking the individual trade setup. All right, so the stop would be right above your entry, about 5% with the cycle cross. So you're fitting your risk management plan. We've got to figure out 5% of what is going to equal our $2,000 max loss, right? And 5% is pretty small, so we can use... I'm guessing it's 20,000. Let's try it. 20,000 times 0.05 is 1,000. So we can actually use $40,000, right? We've got a, what did we say it was? Yeah, we've got a 5% stop loss. We're willing to risk 2% of our account. 5% of 40K equals $2,000. So we can risk up to $40,000 on a short play here. Right. And then if you use, if you choose the wider stop, which will keep you in the trade longer. So I'm not sure if you guys hear those sirens out there. It'll keep you in the trade longer, but you're going to, you know, if you're taking a 28% loss, you have to use a lot smaller size, probably only a few thousand dollars. Okay. So that's up to you when you take the trade. Again, we're going off the basis that you just use a tight stop above your entry. Right? 
first, if you guys watched the profit taking video too, you know, first two candles that move in your favor, first two to three, book some profits. All right, so you've gone, you have a 5% stop loss. Price has moved over 5% in your favor. So you're up, you're up your risk, if that makes sense, right? Meaning if you took out, you can take out enough profits now so that if your stop gets hit, it's a smaller loss. Right, if I take off a third here and it rips back up to my 5% stop loss, I'm not actually taking a 5% loss because I already took off a third of my profits. Okay. But in this case, the cycle takes it all the way down and we can take out as much as we like at this level. I recommend up to 80% with a cycle cross. Okay, and the last 20%, same as before, we're trailing it, right? This is the initial stop. You get a bearish engulfing. Now I can have a new stop. All right, we get another bearish engulfing. I got a new stop. And this means that for this cycle, right, I just traded this for 80% of my size. And I will miss most of the greater picture move, but what's not going to miss it is my trailing stop, right? Stop here, stop above there. Another bearish engulfing, move your stop. And pretty much every time you're making new lows, you can just move your stops. And boom, there. You can take it out. Let the market take you out on your last 20%. So your last 20% is in profits of 12%, which if you just took it all out when you decided to get out, it would have only been profits of 7%. All right? But we talked about letting the market take you out in the profit taking video, so I won't hit on it too much. But that's, that's how you want to be thinking about this, guys. You want to be trading most of your size with your cycles and your setups. You determine your position sizing based off your stop, right? Our risk management plan tells us to take a 2 to 5% max loss per trade. Where are we now, whether you take 2 or 5 or 3 or 4 or 1, that's up to you. Okay, I'm not going to dictate your individual plan for you, but I choose on average the 2% more than anything else.